So stay excited, fresh and playful. Everybody says that, everybody of course would like that, but let's think what, what's preventing us from being that. I would start from understanding what excitement is. And excitement, or at least one of the causes to it, is dopamine released in our brain. And one more thing to understand is that the amount of the dopamine that released during an experience is directly related to our expectation from this experience. What can we understand from this? That it's very tricky. It's very tricky to do something over and over again and to expect to have the same excitement and satisfaction from this action or activity time after time. So what can we do? It's been a while that I'm obsessed with the origin of thoughts, origin of ideas, where they come from. And there are different ideas. Some are recreation of my memory, kind of old ideas that come true, readjusted to the current thing I'm working on. They mostly offer an old solution to a similar problem I had in the past. Some ideas are inspired by others, kind of go through my system and readjust themselves to the current thing I'm on. But some come absolutely out of nowhere. It feels almost like an email or a text message that I receive from an exter external server. And I don't know what I can say, say about the server or where it comes from and what it is, but I definitely can talk about the connection to the server. That sometimes I have a very good connection to that server, sometimes this connection is disrupted and disturbed. And I figured out that I can work on this connection and make it more stable and at least identify this from, from other emails and text messages that I receive that are probably less relevant and coming from a different place. So here are a few things that I've noticed that definitely doesn't help to the connection to this source of ideas, let's say fresh original ideas. So number one is by far stress. There is a known psychological state called fight or flight. It's operated when we feel stressed and unease. I think it's an old instinctual mechanism in us that is, it's an alert system. When we are in danger, that signals us to run, basically. More blood is uh, allocated to the hands, to the feet, and to the parts of the brain that are in charge of um, mechanical reactions. As a result of that, of course, less resources arriving to the parts in the brain that are in charge of conscious behavior and creative processes. We need to understand that this old mechanism can't recognize between a lion ap appearing in front of you and you are in life danger and now it doesn't matter if your violin doesn't sound good, run. Between something like that to you know, your tune, it doesn't sound good or the director doesn't like your cue, or you, you are running out of time and you need to write five more pieces. There's absolutely no difference to that. The reaction is the same, and what you lose is, is this, is less resources arrive to the, to the parts that you actually need at that moment. In our case, stress is rooted in meeting the expectations, being able to deliver, and all that things. So once again, we need to trick ourselves and even though it's stressful to write so much music in short period of time and all those things and when things don't go well we need to trick ourselves and send signals into our internal system that everything is okay and that's not a problem it's just a little tiny thing and everything will be all right and you will write beautiful music and so on and so on and you got to develop that trust over doing over and over and over and succeeding and kind of printing into yourself this that no matter what, eventually it will be all right. So there is no reason to operate all these mechanisms and it's not a line, it's just a reverb. Number two is knowledge and intellect. And don't get me wrong, knowledge is power and knowledge is the healthy way to build confidence 
and self-trust. But it's a very tricky line to misuse it. And in the wrong situation, it can very easily turn into a very nice, nasty voice in your head that tries to push you back to your comfort zone, to your safe zone, in a box that you already tested, that you already know. And the problem is that most of the time, not most of the time, all the time, life is not in that box. And whatever you want to create is not in that box as well. So it's definitely something that disturbs the connection to this open flow of ideas and freshness. One more thing about knowledge is knowing something can ruin the experience. Back to what we said at the beginning, the dopamine system. When you know what to expect, you will have less reward from it. Less reward means less excitement, less freshment, and less of all these wonderful butterflies in the air. But when the red button is on, you need to develop this button of turning this off and just trusting that all you know is with you at all time. Everything you do is coming through all those things that you already know, and you don't have to worry about it. It's pretty much there. Not pretty much, it is there at all times. So once again, it's one more trick to bypass a system in our head. So not knowing, uh, this state of not knowing, sets the brain in a very interesting state of mind, of exploration and innocence. And it's, I think, very valuable for maintaining this excitement and freshment and excitement, freshness and playfulness. I came across this story, it's related to this dopamine reward system. It's the story of the, this man that was an astronaut and reached the moon. Couple, he has been there a couple of times and after he finished this type of work, it was very hard for him to get back to life or do anything else. Because seriously, what can you do after? What what will give you the same amount of excitement and the same amount of dopamine, I guess, in your brain to keep on doing things and feel that you are moving forward and not backward. So in this case, it, it turned into alcohol and other similar substances that basically what they do is that, is pumping the dopamine in your head. So innocence, wonder, childish exploration, all these things are very valuable for keeping us excited, fresh, creative, and playful. There's something really magical in saying, okay, yeah, I know, I know, I know, and saying, okay, I don't know, let's see. Hmm, what, that, what can that be? Something very interesting is happening in, in this state of, I don't know, let's see. So knowledge is a power, is a very, very strong power, but it's important to learn how to use it and when to use it. During some processes, it's extremely valuable when you need to architect an arrangement, a complicated you know, orchestral arrangement, or figure out which part goes after which part, or think how this will work with this, or if this cue goes into this other cue, how to connect them in the right way, all this, yeah. But rest of the time, develop this switch and turn it off. One more thought is knowledge and intellect is somehow, in my opinion, the latest arrivals to our system. Because imagine we have these instincts in us that are millions years old. We have, I guess, Intuition is also it's a very old mechanism and all these intellectual processes and knowledge and the use of knowledge, at least at the form we know it today in modern life, is insane and it's quite new to us. I think we are still figuring out what to do with it and how to, do, and how to use it right and how to have this at our service and not the other way around. I think you, only with your knowledge, is like an operating system without a connection to an internet. And this connection to the internet is this intuitive flow of ideas, which I have no, I don't know what it is or where it comes from. But as I've mentioned, 
I figure out those couple of things that definitely don't help to that, to your connection to it and to you staying fresh, excited and constantly creative. The third thing and the last thing I would mention is I don't know how to call it, but it's politics, basically. It's me wanting to be great and being recognized as great and being in control of a situation. I definitely noticed that when I try to be in a, in a control of a situation, it kills this flow of excitement, freshment and creative flow of ideas. When I operate out of wanting to serve the situation and doing really the minimum I'm required to serve what is in front of me, I'm much more fresh, I'm much more excited, I'm mostly, most likely more satisfied with the results and definitely more connected to this intuitive flow. And once again, this false feeling of I know can block a much better idea and kill intuition. So stay childlike. So to sum up, to keep excitement, freshment and creativity rolling, I try to operate less from my head and allow myself being taken on a ride. Remember this dopamine system that is one of the causes to excitement and feeling of freshness and satisfaction is directly related to your expectations. So to stay fresh and excited, you need to surprise yourself. So intuition is a voice that won't shout. It will be there gently saying what it's trying to communicate. You need to quiet the other voices in order to hear it and learn to identify that from all the others. That at least in my case, the others lead me to this path of getting tired from my actions, being less satisfied at the end. And the more you develop this trust mechanism, the clearer and easier it becomes time after time to identify this from the others and to follow that path. So to close that topic, I would say what comes out of you is not what you are trying to architect or what you think or what, you, what comes out of you eventually is what you are in that moment. So you want to be fresh and excited, be fresh and excited. You want to make exciting results, you have to be excited while you are doing them. Thank you very much. That's all for today. See you next time.